Old world versus new world. The debate continues. It goes on and on. And to be honest, my personal preference is that it's all just kind of dirt. But if you speak to a lot of people out there who believe genuinely that old world is better. We're from the new world. We're a little bit biased. And today we're going to have a bit of a decider match. We've got six wines here, all of them red. We don't know the grape variety. They are all the same grape variety though. Three of them come from the OG home turf, the native origin of the grape variety. And the other three come from the new world. We don't know whether that's Australia or South Africa or New Zealand, but we just know New World. You guys are going to be able to see whether or not we can tell the difference, and we're going to tell you how much we'd buy and what we like the most. Let's get into it. Blind wine tasting. A variety, three from its home nation and three from another other nations. I think I got that right. I think I figured that out. So all six of these are red. So first of all, Illuminating Grenache Blanc, which is great news for me. It's my arch nemesis on the channel, as people who've been watching for a long time would be aware. Straight off the nose, I'm already pegging Gamay, uh, mainly because of this sort of raspberry seedy thing. It could also be Sangiovese on the nose. They kind of, often I'll find Gamay, like really well-crafted Gamay and Sangiovese to, to be sort of toe and toe in terms of aromatics. Mm, yeah, this smells the absolute goods. Really enjoying this. Juicy, lovely kind of gentle, soft tannin, barely there. A lovely mix of like red and purple fruits, that fresh raspberry, good, like decent acidity. It's not like racy acid, but it's got this kind of like fresh, like perfectly ripe fruit character. Mm. That is a tasty wine. A little bit tart, not heaps of fruit weight, like not, certainly not drying out your mouth when you're drinking it. So again, Pretty happy with my assessment based on the visuals that it's not going to be one of those heavy reds. Multiple things to be tossing up here. First of all, is it old world, new world? It feels new. <laughs> it feels like a new world wine. New world, tart. Wine number two, we are definitely going darker in shade here. So this is definitely not um, where I was thinking we were gonna go uh, when it comes to, to particularly Gamay, but we'll see. Yeah, darker, darker fruits here. Like a lot more black currant and black cherry. More confected sort of notes on this one, giving that similar sort of tartness, but then there's a little bit of that, like uh, buh, 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 the sort of flavor that you get when you have sort of musk sticks, that little bit of sweetness that runs through the middle of the palate, which I'm into. Tannins are quite luscious. Quite, not, not so full and broad, but they're just luscious. They're present. They're supporting the wine. Definitely fun. A little bit of a savory finish as well. Not hating my Gamay shout at the moment. I wish I knew which country Gamay originated in because that's part of the game here. Um, <laughs> feel this is potentially a new world um, uh, example of this. I do enjoy this, not as much as I enjoyed the first wine. The first wine I felt was a bit nervier, a little bit twitchier, whereas this is a little bit more enveloping, a little bit more generous. And I'm gonna go 35. Good, Not. I really like the first one just a bit more, but I like the kind of riper fruit spectrum here, but I just, I prefer that like lighter red kind of take on it. Wine number three, again, Looking really similar in terms of your color profiles here. We do have that violet color sticking around. You can get sick of me saying that in this tasting bracket, I reckon. Mm. Again, this sort of hint of reduction thing, and, and I'm now kind of feeling, kind of presents itself with a very slight, very slight touch of bread. Tiny, like really, really minuscule touch. The first wine kind of had a similar vibe, but it was a little bit, um, I was gonna say sterile is a horrible word, but that's what it is. It just doesn't showcase as much as uh, this does. Beautiful, vibrant acid, fresh, beautiful drive. That savouriness adds a nice bit of complexity. It's not just that like juicy red fruit thing. There is a the nice spiciness to it. Which again could be coming from some barrel age. Oh yeah. All right, so the previous two wines have been really sort of, uh, like I've been talking about confected and a little bit of tartness, but this has got this really sort of um, like strawberry seeds or like underripe fruit sort of thing going on. So like a little bit of a peakier acid just at the start. Big fan, big fan here. Gonna drop around about 60 bucks, going to buy 12. I believe we're in Gamay territory. I don't think we could be anywhere else. And big fan of, of where we're at uh, for those wines. These are all very high quality. One number four, okay. Still like, still purple, not going into that sort of tawnier red sort of space, but a much deeper color. Back to tannin, defining the whole palette as opposed to wine number one and wine number three which were all about the acid. These are all about the tannin, mouthfeel and texture, very chewy, almost sinewy levels of tannin. Now, this has definitely seen a bit of age, but it's showing some nice characters. Um, might've got this entirely wrong. That might've been all new world, and this, this could be now into the old world side of things, because that like level of complexity and savouriness is something you really don't see from Australian. Yeah, definitely seen more time in barrel, that one. 
Um, struggling to stick with my gamay guess here because generally I'd be looking for something that's a little bit more, I don't know, Spanish tasting. Gamay from Spain, sounds like a Spanish thing to say. And I'm kind of in that sort of third, uh, $38 a bottle. L by six, I think is a very, very yummy wine. Very, very yummy one. Uh, I think it's New World though. Definitely a dead ringer for an Australian or a warm climate, warmish climate style of wine. Tannin's a little bit tighter and grainier. It's still really good. It's still really good. I'm going to half a dozen for this one. I'm going to go 60 bucks. I reckon there's a lot of detail in here as well. Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to stay with Old World, and I'm just going. To, I think I might have to rearrange my entire first guess because like those are really classy and really well balanced. But this one just has that seriousness and that fine grain tannin. First taste I'm going to take. Give me a mulligan. But ultimately, I'm a sweet boy at heart. I want to taste some fruit juice in my wine. So uh, I'll have six bottles of that one which again, nothing to sneeze at because it's had some oak. It's probably gonna cost a little bit more money. We're gonna crack 50 on that one, especially given that I think it's old world, so it's imported. You've got to slap that international tax on it given how far away we are from everything else here in Australia. Uh, I'll say that that is a $55 bottle of wine. <laughs> Wine number five. Little bit of a spritz going on here. Little bit of a spritz. Got a bit of stem to it. The freshness here is a lot better than the kind of previous wine. There is that kind of vibrancy and electricity kind of powering through the wine alongside that lovely kind of spicy savory thing. Yep, I've got this entirely wrong. The, the top three were the New Worlds. Less hot on this one. More of a three bottle sort of guy for me. Uh, we've got a new, we've got an old. Determined what that one yet. Probably newer. New world. Big fan. This one's a little bit more of that, um, I think like Van der Swaff, easier drinking, more approachable, but and potentially a, uh, a producer with a much more hands-off approach, I feel here, than the others that we've just tasted. That's like a perfect like autumnal, like early crisp, crisp winter evening or crisp like, you know, changing of the seasons into kind of mid-year red wine. Agricultural organic smell that it's definitely either seen like stem treatment or oak treatment. I love when I say definitely in these videos and then Lockie ruins me afterwards. <laughs> and then wine number six. Definitely pretty pale here, but definitely again got that... Um, a bricky faded rim, but it's still got some freshness to it as well. Like we, we're, we're all going through a cost of living crisis in Australia at the moment, so I've been eating a fair bit of food that maybe I've forgotten to cook earlier in the week and I can't really bring myself to throw out because I can't afford to. And you've got this sort of like, should I cook this chicken? And it's got that slightly sour smell to it. This wine's giving. This wine doesn't smell like off chicken. Fuck, I've just realized. No, it, that's, that's not it. It's just this like sour thing. If your chicken smells like this, don't cook it. Now, if I'm correct, if I'm correct and we are going back to New World, then I'm gonna smell probably more primary aroma, probably more ripeness, and uh, probably a little bit more of the tannin defining the palate rather than the acidity. Take away everything I said back, that's um, that's definitely got some freshness to it. The tannin's really broad, but it's very fine and very soft, but it's kind of wrapping all around my gums, but it's just like very gently doing that. Grenache, Italian wine, pretty tasty. Definitely my two favorites, came second and third in the lineup, but very keen to see what the boys think. Not, not as complete as the previous wines that we had tasted, but uh, definitely some absolute bangers there because I am, I'm a huge fan. I've spent a lot of money and I've bought a lot of wine. See how the other guys fared. You know, I love the concept, the old, old world, world, new world. world so one had, country. Yeah. Once you kind of mm. got like, you know, three of them are from the home region versus three from not the home region of the same oh, variety. Yeah. Like kind of like connecting the dots and like like taking the blue pill and you're like, all right, sweet, I've got it. And did, then you're in. Would yeah, you, did you reckon, there, <laughs> do you reckon there was a pattern to to how like it went origin to not origin or? Yeah, I reckon it's oh, a pattern. I reckon yes. a pattern. Okay. Mm, I, apparently I don't think that was a pattern. I've just looked at my notes. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. no it was funny where I was like, you know, I tasted the first three wines and I was like, yeah, that's definitely like, oh, they're all old world. And then I tasted the last three. I was like, I was wrong. Mm. And I was like, yeah, no, nah, first three and you were, last three I would. That was oh, my, that, that was that, your thing. That was my gut my, feeling. Mine went alternating. Oh, one, one off, one another, one, another, yeah. one, another, oh, one another. Yeah. So yeah. here we go. Uh, guesses on variety. For me, it was could have been one. It could have been one of two things. Yeah. I only had two in my bracket, and it was either Grenache or Gamay. Mm. Mm -hmm. ah, they're the things I was talking about. So, I mean, I threw Nero out there at one point just because you know it's red. But no, like, nah, no, I, I, said, I started yeah. on Gamay, and then I think at the end I pulled a uh, no nah, handbrake. We're going, uh, going Grenache. Grenache. Grenache? No, yeah. I was firmly Gamay. My oh, coolies were on yeah. Gamay. Which means, which country do you think the old world stuffs from? France. 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 Yeah, I think I said France too. Great. All right, we're all on board. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> uh, wine number one. 
Uh, checks, checks, notes, Ooh, checks, yeah. notes. Yeah, I really liked this one. It was good. It was nice, like, kind of juicy, like, a really good, just like, you know, Bats 50 kind of Beaujolais, just, you know. Yeah, not first drop, like, but second organic. drop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought it was a little bit tart. Uh, mm, I went New World on this one for Same. no apparent... Like, I don't know how the taste is between New World and Old World wine sometimes. But... There, were, there was more rusticity with la these last three, which kind of led me towards um, Old World. There was a bit more savouriness, mm. stem <sighs> use, and stuff like that, whereas this was like, these three for me were like really juicy and this one was probably like the juiciest of the bunch from memory. I went yeah. old world. Oh wow. Uh, okay. With this, I went old world. I went old, old, old. Yeah. New, 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 mm -hmm. new. Um, and it was just purely based on what I perceived to be more primary characters. Of these three, I thought this was the most primary. So it definitely could be either or. So most primary characters meant old world for you? No, I thought these were very primary, but of the old world ones, which were a little bit more savory, ah. defined by their acidity. All shall be revealed. Yeah. I wanted to spend 55 bucks. 34. 40. And I wanted 12. Six? Six. How much was it like? Gamay! Gamay! New World Gamay, better man. Yeah. New World Gamay. From the great man, Peter Dredge. The man. Oh, it's Dredgy! Dredgy. Yeah. Oh, Done it again. Yeah. You don't miss. He doesn't. Miss. Yeah, like rarely, rarely. If and ever. these wines even look old world to me. Yeah, exactly. Same like, thing. We thought it with the Riesling as well. Uh, stunning wines, <laughs> absolutely stunning yeah. wines. I love this Meadowbank stuff. Like we always get really hyped on the like the Doctor Edge dredgy stuff, but the Meadowbank wines just kick. They're a bit more like classic, like classical. Whereas mm -hmm. like you know dredge is a bit edgier. Like I do like the classical bend of this brand. I think it's really cool. It's gonna be so annoying depending on how this gets edited because I started out being like, yeah, this is New World Gamma, and then just went further and further away from the truth <laughs> <laughs> as the tasting went on. Like you better keep that shit in. Give me something in <laughs> this. Start I love well, Australian New World Gamay and it's like, oh no, nah, second but... guess yourself. It's always about the gut, man. Yeah, Go with the gut. Time. So we're talking about six Gamays here. Uh, obviously, so we, we are gonna, we did try some Beaujolais here. Uh, was number two the Beaujolais? Uh, I don't know, maybe? It was a little bit oaky. I, I called this one Old World compared to this one. Like, I, I I suppose it's interesting because like hearing you guys talk about why you called things new and old, like I can't sort of articulate why I think something is new or old. Mm. It's just sort of like, that's really juicy. And this has got a little bit of oak in it. So maybe this is heading in the more it's old world direction. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I like, this is my first of the dozens. I got two dozens in this lineup, really into this wine. Um, yeah, Old World Gamay as it turns out. I'm so cool. I thought I called new. I called new as well. Shit! <laughs> Dude, we could be wrong. Yeah, yeah I hope so. He was wrong about the first one. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I just thought it was jammy. Just, just ripe. It was riper. It was like less acid. Uh, tannins were a bit broader. Mm. Um, it was real just like chug style gamay. Still yummy though. Yeah, like delicious. Oh, yeah. Yummy, yummy. I, I didn't like it as much as I did the previous one, but I was like, I would not kick any of these wines out of bed. Like no, these no, are no. all fantastic. No, they're mm. all very drinkable. Um, 40 bucks and six. Uh, three for 35. Oh, yeah. Old world. Old world. Oh, okay. Old world. okay, yeah. Fractor bunt. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm two for two on the old world, new world calls, baby. Let's go. Well done. <laughs> right there. Right, you're, you're, you're the only one with the clean slate. The gauntlet's going your way uh, that so is far. That's awesome. I think we've had this wine before. We, we frothed this on the show last time we had it um, yeah. a few years ago. Um, and yeah, it's it's still just like for 38 bucks for a glass of red wine, for a glass of imported red wine. A bottle even. Huge. A bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 750 millimeters of imported red wine. Yeah, Unbelievable stuff. God, don't worry yeah. about it, man. It's from Melbourne these days. Uh, wine number three. That's not a pun. All right, so. And now we're talking. This is where we're getting a lot we're more We're really like yep. stepping up here. This is starting to get a little bit more complexity, a little bit more interest. This is where I'm starting to go, yeah. This is when I, I like Gamay at its when I'm, when I'm wa wanting that kind of savory, rustic style. For what's, sure. what's the thing that stands out for you on the nose of that wine? Farts. Farts? Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I like, said Brett! Yeah, yeah. There, there's ah, Brett. There's definitely, got it. There, <laughs> there's definitely Brett here, but it's like, this is, I I called it a, a, the ghost of Brett, you know? It's like, right it's, 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 in the, it's in the room. Yeah. You don't really notice it, like, if you unless you're looking, and then you're just like, oh, I feel kind of weird. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like, this is the ghost of Brett is in the room. But it also, like, mixes well with, like, the whole bunch character of the wine, which is definitely a lot yeah. of, like, green, stemmy kind of thing. But I really liked it. I really liked that kind of savory, slightly bretty, but juicy mm. red uh, I was a massive fan. I wanted 12 of this. I wanted to pay 60 bucks. I thought it was coming at a pretty penny. Um, and I thought we're talking crew, crew Beauge at this level. Old world stuff. Yeah, I, I love this one as well, despite going Brett. I was just like more for identifying, is this Brett on the nose oh, yeah. for myself? I think it smells wonderful, tastes wonderful. I got a dozen for 42. I got nine for 50, obscure, but I, that was kind of where I was feeling. 
Oh, no, dude. Dude. This is, uh, this is good old uh, Worlds Apart Wines from the Adelaide Hills. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this is a really good one. I've had this one previously and it was very impressive at the price mm. point and continues to be from Louis Schofield. Mm. Wow, um, dude. Kudos, mate. That's awesome. Very, very good gear. I'm not sure where this is the fruit's from, but somewhere in the hills. Um, mm. dun, dun, dun. No, um, that's where the winery is. No, these mind. Aussie wines are tasting more old world than the old world wines. <laughs> To me, oh, anyway. Look, look yeah. so like, this is 38 bucks, oh, this is 40 bucks. Oh. If you're like in Australia, you'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm taking this every yeah. single day of the week. Yeah. But like, yeah. if you go to Europe, this would be like eight euro. No, so you're less, like, less. yeah, less than that or something yeah. stupid. You'd just be like, well, fuck, like, why yeah, would I even yeah, yeah, consider yeah, yeah. anything else? So it's yeah. like, that's when the Australian wine kind of pricing really starts to work well in our favor. All right, so if we go by my, my inkling, which was old, new, old, new, Therefore, this is actually old. Yes. This I, must be. <laughs> yeah, I called old on this one. Yeah, I called old on this one. I called new, um, but I thought it was. I, again, I thought it was great. I wanted six. I wanted to pay thirty-eight bucks for it. I thought it was yummy. I yeah, it was juicy. Bit of oak here. Yeah, like a bit of yeah. a, a, a whack of oak, which is like not in a bad way, just an mm. actual extra character. Yeah, I was into it. I wasn't quite as into some other, this as some others, but I think it was really good. Yeah, I think the oak really sort of started to stand out a little bit for me more on the second half of this tasting. I thought. This was probably like the, uh, it felt like the fanciest sort of oak on the nose to me. The rest, like, I called this one like a freshly restored wooden boat. And then the next one's like seen some time at sea sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> so I was into it. Uh, I called it Old World. I wanted six of them. I was going to pay 55 bucks. I thought the uh, use of oak might have jacked up the price on this one a little bit. Always more, but... does. Always does. Uh, I was six for 60 on this one. Liked it, but like, you know, I really liked it, but not quite at that super extent. Mm. Where are we at? <laughs> Flurry. Flurry. That is a good looking flurry. That is very good. George Combs, one of the best Beaujolais producers yeah. kind of kicking around. Um, mm. Very, very mm. good stuff. Um, yeah, like, you know, it's got that, the use of oak is definitely there. Like, as far as, if you're spending a hundred bucks on, like, you know, Burgundy, this is, like, let's remember, this is still counts as Burgundy, technically. Mm. Um, and, like, for, Gamay, you're punching heaps high. Whereas if you're spending a hundred bucks on Pinot from Burgundy right now, you're probably getting something that's okay. So it like backs up. Yeah, it's delicious. Out of my $99 that I'm spending on this bottle, how much do you reckon is going to the winemaker versus how much is going to the graphic designer of these uh, labels? <laughs> what? That is one of the most plain what, 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 happens, <laughs> what happens when the graphic designer is the winemaker? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Uh, all right, wine number five. Yum, so Yum. fucking good. This was my wine to line up. This was uh, up there for me. This, <laughs> this fucking rules. Uh, it's my least favorite, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, like the dried kind of earthy, like like cascari, like, mm. you know, savoriness to it. It's like really well lignified stems. This is fucking beautiful. This isn't mate. like everything that Louis Schofield's doing, but cranked up. Like yeah. two or three notches. Things that you can't really do unless you're from, like, unless it's like Beaujolais, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just fucking unreal. So you went Old World? Yeah, I, I, I would, all these three for Old, old World, all those three were New World. Okay, okay. Interesting. Mm. Beauty. Um, I wanted 12 and I wanted to pay, hopefully, 55, but I could be swayed a little bit further north than that. Uh, three for 36. I didn't hate it. Like, all of these wines are yummy, but like, it was, uh, uh, it's the one I would reach for again last out of last. the lot. Yeah. I was 12 for 70 for this one. New Zealand Sato Game! Hell uh, yeah! So, all I needed to do. Was alternate, you did alternate. You went the wrong way around. You went the wrong way around. You got every single one wrong. But you were like, your theory was sound. Oh, right. really cool. Rejig the theory. Now this is really interesting. I'm very actually I'm curious to know because this is so like spicy and ripe. Now there's this there's something that's happened in New Zealand wine industry very recently that's fascinating, is that Ripon. Uh, winery mm. based in Otago had mm. Gamay, but then they've done actual statistics. They've done right. a analyzed the DNA of DNA the vines. Of it. It's actually Pinot, it's not yeah. Gamay. And that oh. has led to all of the, so people grab the cuttings from Ripon to establish their own vines of Gamay. So this might not actually be Gamay, this could be Pinot. Um, and it kind of has that feel of it could be Pinot. Um, because that that was the kind of mother wine for the uh, the whole of the kind of New Zealand uh, wine industry. So this this is fascinating, but it's fucking delicious. You watching House of the Dragon? At the no, moment? I'm not. No. Ah, dude, well, fuck, there's a great metaphor in there. Ah, fuck. Work it you out at home. Don't yeah. spoil it. <laughs> is it Targaryen or is it not? Who knows? Fuck. <laughs> Could be Pino, Maybe it's Gamay. Either way, it's on the back of something and it's expensive now. Fuck. Now, as Robert Rathian said, more wine. All right. So <laughs> that means this last one is Old World. You think so? You think so? Oh, this is wine to line up for me. Fucking uh, love. 
This it. was one liner. I loved it. Oh, this was this was my least. Really? Yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. gorgeous and elegant. And, <laughs> like, okay. This was one of those wines that I could just spend more and more time on dissecting and just be like, oh my fucking God, there's like little mm. details that are missing. It's so good. Okay, so imagine you're me, right? And you went shopping on Monday and you haven't cooked for the week yet because you've been busy doing other things. You yes. get to Friday and you open the chicken out of the fridge that smells like that. Do you cook it? Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, so I think that smells a bit Tell sour. Tell you what, Cock I'm into it. Let's yeah, go. I don't know. It smells a bit sour. I don't know. Of, like, of all of these, the reason why I didn't jump at it, it was aromatically, I didn't feel it was... Gamay. I thought it was like the leaf varietal. Um, the tannin on it is glorious. It's, it's like Neb tannins. Um, in yes. fact, it even tastes Italian to me, to be honest. That graphite mm. oh, yeah. like pencil so, shaving yeah. structure. Mm, mm. But it's just like, like I, aromatically for me, I thought this was gorgeous. Just pretty and savory, so like dried else. cherries. It's fucking lovely. Literally thought it smelled like salmonella. Anyway. <laughs> 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 well, I was like 35 bucks and three to six. Uh, yeah, 40 bucks, uh, 6. 12 and 90. It's still light selling color, apparently. Yeah, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. There you go. Damn, awesome. I mean, fucking excellent shit. Just awesome. excellent, excellent shit. What my takeaway here is that I think the Australian and New World producers, my bias, obviously admitting my bias, they're kicking ass when it comes to gamay. Yeah, mm. they're really, really good. Yeah, they're like 100%. fucking stunning. Yeah, no, there's a good um, shout for Australia, you know, kind of kicking more some, uh, you know, producing more and more high quality gamay. When you got these two kind of backing it up, like mm. hell yeah, super good. And then like you know, Sato makes epic wines, and you know, New Zealand for gamay makes a lot of sense. But it could be Pinot, so who knows? One number three. One number three. Blois. Bit, bit of Brett, Adelaide Hills, tick tick. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. And on that note, we're gonna leave you guys here. Ciao.